Okay, so I have been asked to talk to you about, uh, there are actually two, two topics I want to talk. So one is church shift, but the church shift issues we will touch mostly in the morning plenary sessions, if I'm correct. So we will talk and I will um, try to motivate you as a pastors and as a ministers to do your church not the way you always did it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to try to confuse you say, by saying, oh, you did the wrong church. No, you did right, absolutely. But the time is changing. The characteristics of the time is changing. And if you really want to bring the difference, if you really want to bring the gospel into the modern world, then you need to make a shift of the church. Okay? But these, during these seminars, I'm going to talk mostly again about the systems. And this time I'm going to talk about the structures. Systems and structures. Systems and structures. Why? Because I, want, I really want you to be equipped with the practical uh, tools. With the practical tools that will help you, that will really help you to overcome. Because there are so many times when people, uh, when pastors and ministers, we really... You know, we are really filled with the energy of the Holy Spirit. We're really filled with the revelations of the Holy Spirit. We're really filled with the passion to go and do something. But let me ask you a question. I don't know if you've heard about the statistics or, and I don't know the statistics of Nigeria. But in the United States, about 3,000 pastors and ministers, they resign, they quit the ministry every month. Wow. Why is that so? Because of the personal discouragement. They are discouraged because they put so much efforts in what they do, but they see no results. And sometimes it seems for some pastors like that, it seems even like God is, you know, powerless. God is weak. He cannot do something. But it's not so. The, the God is powerful. But the, problems, the problem with us as, a, you know, pastors and ministers, sometimes we don't read, you know, in, the, you know, between, the, in between the rows. We don't read. We don't understand. We don't really understand what Bible tells us. God is telling us, you know, very clear. You know, everybody has Bible. God is telling everything clear. But if you don't do what Pastor John was telling you, if you don't do your personal prayer retreats, you, you may miss some of the information. So I'm going to share with you the practical tools. Like, I wouldn't compare. I wouldn't dare to compare. But it seems like that. Do you remember once Jesus, he taught, you know, multitudes. He taught them about some you know, parables he told and then at the end the disciples came and they asked Jesus we are not stupid but we don't really understand what you said what you said about we don't understand about those you know four types of the soil what did you tell about and he said because you are the disciples I'm going to show you the secrets I'm going to reveal those secrets to you and he explained and they said oh now we understand so I'm going I'm not going to show you something new because actually, I'm not the one who created that. I read this about this in the Bible. I've seen it in my pastor's life. So we will talk about systems and structures. Systems and structures. And once again, if you see any organization in the world, it doesn't matter whether it's a Christian or it's not Christian. If you see any good, if you see any, um, you know, if you see any successful organization, organization yeah, well, in, in the world, you could find out, you can easily notice if you will, you know, go deeper into that, you will easily notice that that system, it has, uh, sorry, that organization has its own system. It has goals, it has mission, it has strategy, it has structure. But, you know, for example, if I'll tell you uh, Apple, whom of you have heard about Apple? Who knows that the Apple products, you know, and the Apple business of, of the, you know, this company, Apple is successful. So why is it successful? Because of Steve Jobs? No. Why is it successful? Because of the name Apple? You can name your church Apple, but it will not become successful as Apple. So there is something in behind, there is something behind the curtains. Something that people sometimes, they don't even speak out because they think everybody should understand that. For example, if you ask Pastor David what made him successful, one side is what Pastor John was talking about, self-preparation. He prepared himself. He made the, the, um, the size, the volume of his personality is so big that, trust me, what you see now, it's not even what he deserves. You don't really understand the level, you know, the, the, the volume of his personality. And yes, your life, your achievements, your results, your... your you know, your final results, they determined and they, they are connected to the volume of your personality. But 
if you ask about the ministries, the success of the ministry, he's going to give you some ideas and you will say, wow, wow, wow. But it's not about making wows. It's about, you know, knowing also, understanding how to create your own. In any, you know, any area you go, any city you go, I, I, I said in the morning, I said, there are no hard territories. Trust me. I've been in the United States. I came to Seattle, Washington. Uh, you know how they call that Washington? The state of Washington? Uh, people, you know, Christians in America, they called the cemetery of missionaries. Because the spiritual situation in that area is so, how to say, people, they hate God. They don't just, listen, they don't just don't believe in God. No, no, they hate God. They hate God. Everything is absolutely opposite to God. I mean, they openly say, they openly, you know, say gay is good. You know, gay movement is good. They are very open in that. And they don't, they, it seems like they don't have, they don't scare God. They don't have fear of God at all. So when we came, I was told, you know, I was sent there with a good, how to say, with a good, uh, you know, wishes. Welcome to the cemetery of missionaries. But because I've been taught by my pastor and he said that, listen, there are no hard territories. Everything is determined by the power of what you know. Everything is limited, you know, you are limited by the limitation of your mind. So when I came, I said, okay, I don't speak good English, but at least my, my pastor, he did Pastor Sunday, he didn't speak good Russian when he came to Ukraine. So he started, so it doesn't mean I am not limited anymore. And all the pastors, you know, who, Russian pastors who came to Seattle, Washington before, they only start working with Russians. I said, I'm not going to start working with Russians. We are going to start work with Americans, Mexicans, you know, etc. You know, all the other nationalities. They said, oh, it's not possible. It's not going to work here. I said, okay, it didn't work for you, but I know something that it will work for me. And we started to work with them. And our church, you know, after the second year, it was 50-50. 50 Russian, farmer Russians and 50 Americans, you know, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, etc., etc. So we had, you know, 50-50. And it does not matter. You are limited by the limitation of what you know. So that's why we are going to talk this, you know, this, during these sessions. We will talk about systems and structures. Systems and structures. And also, I want to... Uh, maybe dramatize, I want to show you the importance of the understanding and ability, the art of system building. I want to show you by reading. I already read about this last time, but I'm going to keep on doing because what I've heard from you yesterday, uh, not, yeah, yesterday, Pastor David, you know, you have pre-election time and you have, you, have, you know, pre-election, pre-governmental uh, elections, and you have lots of candidates. And you know, of course, that there is a, um, there is a, um, I would say there is a confrontation between Christianity and Muslim, Muslims right now in your country. I want to start, guys, I want to start, uh, I want to help you with starting explaining once again about Islam and the way or the strategy they are entering, they penetrate your society. Because listen, you cannot overcome your enemy if you do at least the same level, the same level of what your enemy knows. I'm not saying that Muslims are enemies, listen. I'm very, uh, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be polite and tolerate. I'm not saying Muslims are enemies, no. But I'm saying this, the, the, the kind of, uh, the kind of lifestyle that you may have after they become in the, you know, if they will become in charge, you'll be surprised. Trust me. Okay, so, once again, uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Muhammad Ali Jinnah. I don't know who he is, but it sounds like he's a Muslim. Come forward as servants of Islam. Organize the people economically, socially, educationally, and politically. And I'm sure that you will be a power that will be accepted by everybody. I know you've heard what I said, but you don't really understand what I said. He said about the system, he showed the system how the, the system, and then they have the structure. I'll show you the structure right now also. He showed you and the rest, he showed the system how Islam will become the power that be, will be accepted by everybody. It means there will be no, uh, con uh, there will be no confrontation to Islam. There will be no confrontation. I mean, whether you will raise your voice or no, you will not be heard. Because of the power it might have. And the reason of that, you know, it, it, he explains in this quote, he explains how is it possible, why is it possible. 
And if it's a Christians, we will not get that advice. If we, I would say this advice. It's a hint for me and you. If we will not take it, then you'll be in trouble. Sooner or later, you'll be in trouble. So let me explain to you. Number one, what he says here. He said, servants of Islam. Do you remember? He said, come forward as servants of Islam. Servants of Islam. What does it mean? What does it mean? For you, what, what should it mean for you exactly? Num means being possessed by the values of Islam, putting those values higher than anything else in this world, more than money, more than new car, more than new house, more than your success, more, even more than family and kids, more than anything in the whole world. So he addresses and he tells to his descend, you know, to descendants, to his followers, he's saying, Come as servants. So what they need, what they require, what they do, what they prepare, what they're working for, what do they do behind the curtains? They prepare such quality, people of such qualities. They prepare people who are ready to die for what they believe, who are ready to die for their values. Now let me ask you a question. Are you ready to die for your Christian values? Are you ready to die for your Christian values? If you're not ready to die, just in case if you're not ready to die, they will, they will win. Number two, that, that's a system, you know, the system. He shows the system. Number two, organize, organize, organize. He said, come as a servants of Islam and organize, organize people, organize. What does it mean organize? Organize means form a system of principles and life paradigms, a lifestyle of people. Do you know that they live this, they live such a lifestyle that they support each other? You cannot separate them, you cannot split them. They're communities. Organize, but he said not just organize them, but then he says also, he shows, organize them. Number one, economically. It means financially, financially. Organize, they, they, they have everything within you know they have financial systems within then organize them socially there are no uh, I mean they do not neglect their widows they do not neglect those people who are you know by the way you know they feed for free people who are not Muslims they socially organized they know to grow they need to get new members new people new people new people they're very open They are not like us sometimes. They are very open. They are very open to receive new people, new people. Once I, uh, last time I was here, I was watching CNN or some, you know, some channels here. And I, there was a documentary movie about the British people, you know, British young people. British, you know, who was born in, you know, in Great Britain. They are white, but they became Muslims. And now they are, the, the, they are one of the activists of that movement in Great Britain. Why? Because they were socially accepted by that group of people. In other words, I'm sorry to say, but they were probably socially rejected by Christians. Probably. Next thing, educationally. Educationally, education, it has to be educational system. Educational systems, educational system, educational systems. You know, uh, uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but in, in biology they say that the first, uh, I mean the first person, the first, per, uh, sorry, the first figure that animal sees after its birth automatically becomes, especially for crocodiles, automatically becomes its mother or father, like a parent. So the first, you know, the first one they see. For example, if the lion was born and the first person, the first figure they will see, it's you, it will start count. Okay, that's my mother. That's my mother. Tomorrow, Pastor David will talk about this little uh, about this, and I would suggest you to listen what he says, and don't just say, "Okay, I'll think about it." I'm telling you, while you think, while you say, "I, I will think about it," they are politically organized. How many candidates for the president do they have? Main, many, but main, main one. 
all of them they represent the main one you know they're political organized they know what they do they know exactly what they do they never split they work as one the reason why I say this to you listen we have deal with the system we deal with the system so Islam it's not just a religion it's a system it's a system so we need to present Christianity as and we need to work as a Christian we need to work as a system as a system later on to, uh, right now I'm going to explain you why is that a system but first let me show you let me draw you uh, let me show the, the structure the structure so behind any system there is there should be a structure what is a structure structure it's a something that um, supports or sustains the system and allows system to work I'm going to show you a structure uh, here I have it on uh, my iPad but I think uh, uh, you know Pastor Bina you'll help me to, to draw it's like this they show it like this okay so number one they start with listen they start with that's a structure we will be taught you know today tomorrow the day after tomorrow I'll teach you about the structures how to build structures that will sustain your systems so they start with number one add a full-time unity counselor so they start with to make Islam prosperous prosper in any community in any country of the world they have a strategy and the strategy is supported with a structure so number one add a full-time community counselor number two add a full-time youth director add a full-time youth director number three expand programs for the elderly and toddler to teens from toddlers to through teens to elders all social programs number four systematically engage in intra and interfaith activities they have intersection they don't worry about that they need that number five become a major service organization within the scope of the larger community so become organization so that's how they start so for example if there is a country that is not Muslim at all do you know how will they enter to that society with these five steps they, they, that's their strategy that's the system they have the system their system is to make that you know they don't think how to say they don't think about tenths or thousands of people they don't think like that they think by nations so any nations they enter they think how to overcome the nation for example look at Great Britain look at Germany look at France 40 years ago the amount of Muslims was less than you know two three percent now what they have more than 40 or 50 percent someone I, I've heard someone said that probably probably the future president of Germany or France could become could be a Muslim and it took place it happened in less than 50 years why system system they have the system they systematically work so whenever they go that's their system any country of the world they go they have that system I gave you the beginning then second stage the second stage the second stage is number two meeting the community counseling needs meeting the community's counseling needs you know all of us we have problems all of us all of the people of your community they ask questions why what for when how do they do you know that they have questions how many answers do you bring how systematically you do it what do they do they said meeting the community's counseling needs so they want to become counselors because they want to bring uh, they want to bring answers to the questions number two happy elders and their families oh their strategy we need to make families happy and elders if they will be happy that's good number three happy young professional parents they work with families and number four better reputation and network within the city they want you know that let's be honest is the reputation of uh, Islam is it good is the reputation is it good but yet they prosper do you know how they do it they do they follow these steps they follow the system and they always get better reputation within the community for example you can say oh Islam is bad Islam is bad but if you go to the north and tell there that Islam is bad the community will tell you hey go away they're good we know that 
the communities has been changed by that. Step three, step three. After they did first two steps, they go through step three. More qualified imam candidates apply. How many of you have your, uh, you, you graduate university or institute or university? How many of you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe ten of you. You know what they do? They say, all of our pastors, they must have at least bachelor or uh, what is the next? Master's degree. All of them. All of the imam. All of the imams. That's a strategy. You know, that's a system. All they're, you know, not PhD, but at least bachelor degree. All of them. Next, counseling over time leads to a happier and more sustainable community. Children and youth become part of the community from an early age. So they become, in, you know, interacted with the community. Thank you. Community service and city network leads to greater access to resources. They know, they have no resources, but they know the way to the resources. They know the way to resources. They know where the resources are. And the last stage, listen, what they are going to. Number end result. Exemplary leadership employees, increasing loyal membership, full range of services, strong brand brings in unprecedented amount of financial and human capital resources into the community and makes it nationally recognized faith based organization with a global impact. Do you see where they go? They go like this, step by step. Why? It's a system. It's a system. And we have to understand that our, if we want to conquer with that, if you want to conquer the system, you cannot conquer the system unless you bring a better system. Or at least the same quality of system. Once again, for example, how many of you, you are pastors? May I see your hands? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Hold it like that. Hold it. Hold it like that. No, hold straight, you know, higher. Listen, I'm sorry, but Pastor David, I know, hold your hand, don't put it down. Pastor David, I think, I'm pretty sure you will agree with me. All of you, you have less than five years to get your bachelor or master's degree. Because they already do it. Do you need that? Maybe you personally, maybe you don't need that, but they do it already. If you will, if you will not bring a better system, Pastor, you may put your hands down. Are you with me? Did you hear what I said? You have four or five years to get your bachelor degree. Why do you need that? Because they will be, how to say, more intellectually developed than you. Pastor, Pastor John said, if I wouldn't study English, I wouldn't travel. That is why, you know, you have to understand, you, you have to really understand that. So that's your challenge. That's your challenge. That is your challenge. Okay. So let's talk about systems. So what is the system? System, it's very simple. To show you the system, I just need to draw a couple things. So the system, for, you, for those of you who do not know, the system is the certain sequence or the certain group of actions or activities that lead you to the result, to desired result. That's your beginning. And that's a system. System, it's a certain sequence that leads you to a desired result. Let me ask you a question. What I told you right now about the Islam, can it be shown as a sequence? It means as a step-by-step -step process. Can it be said, can it be named as a process? So if it's a process, it's a system. It means it will work whatever, any country of the world you send it, it will work. Why? Because they already know it's a system. It's a system. It's a system. That is why there are so many things in this world, we pray against them. We don't want them to happen, but yet we see them. Why? Because our work against that is not systematical. 
So that is why we must become the experts or, you know, the experts in the art of system building, systems building. Last time I've been here, you know, last year, I showed you, I explained you already, you know, those things. So that is why this time I'm not going to, I'm not going to go to details. By the way, uh, tomorrow, I think tomorrow they will be available. There are books after I visit you, after I did, you know, because I also understand that there should be a structure behind the system if I want I wrote the book, The Building of System, you know, Building Systems for National Transformation. Whom of you read the book? You see, that's what Pastor John said. If you're not going to read the books, so how will you know something? How you will find out? And this time, as I, I by the way, as I promised, but, but remember Pastor David, I, I promised, I already did the book on values and already did the book Comfortable Faith, the faith, the comfortable faith. And I decided, I made a decision, since I've seen, because I was so much impressed by you, what I decided, I decided not to sell the books. I decided to give them for free to people. I'm not going to print them. I'm not going to print them, of course, because it takes money. I'm going to send you, you know, uh, electronically. All electronic book. Tomorrow I'll explain you how to do. All of you can get the books, but you have to read them. You have to read those books. I know Pastor John will say, Pastor, you have to sell the books, so they need to pay the price. I know you will say, but because I see your pastor, that's not because of you, but that's because of your pastor. I do it for free. That's not because of you, once again. For you, I would sell. But because of him, I translate. I paid my own money. I paid my own money for the translation. And they translate the book from Russian into English for you. So I'm going to, I'm going to send all the, you know, the, that book. And then for those who will succeed, you know, who will successfully go through the process of the art of building systems, if you'll go through the process. Once again, the process is for free. We, we don't charge, we don't take you, we don't make an, an organization, we don't do, it's because of your pastor, I promised Pastor David, I said, Pastor David, I dedicate my five years of my life because I'm thankful to my pastor, Pastor Sandra Delaja. I said, I'm going to do, for, I'll try to do it for free, so I do it for free, we do free course, we call it uh, New Time for Africa project, New Time for Africa, you can just go in, maybe some of you, whom of you, you already went, you know, you already go through the, the, that project, is there anyone? Okay, none of you, okay. You, you went, you got the lessons. So he's getting the lessons. You got the lessons every single week for free. Just for free. And you have no obligations. I don't need you. You do what you want. You do what you should do. So we just do. That's my system. That's my system. The system how I can pay back, you know, for, for, uh, you know to the country that has blessed me with my pastor. That's my system. And I'm going to send those books for you for free also. But you have to become an expert in systems building. What, for example, for example, let me show you an example. Whom of you, you want to have a church of 1,000 people? You want to have a church? For example, you may ask me a question. Pastor Andrew, is your church has, does your church have 1,000 members? No, my church doesn't have 1,000 members because I don't build the church of, that's not my goal. My goal is to build church of 1,000 leaders. That's not my goal. And I have a system and I go to that system. You know, every year, every year, I go to that goal. So this, this year we have about 200, we will, by the end of the, by, uh, in the middle of the year, we're going to have 250 leaders. I'm not talking about uh, you know, uh, church members. I'm talking about leaders. Leaders that I know. If I say yes, they say yes and they go. That's mine. But if, for example, if you want to build the church of 1,000 1, people, let's say your goal, your goal, your result, you want to have 1,000 church members. Church members. I wouldn't suggest you to do this because, listen, sometimes we get 1,000 members, then we don't know what to do with them. So that's why that's not my goal. But just in case, for you to understand, that's very easy. And for example, let's say that's only one, you are the only person. You are the only person. I know Pastor David did that. He did that here in Enugu. He already showed you a little bit about it. He knows how to build a system. He did that in Lagos, I know. He, he did it already in uh, Accra, Ghana. He does it. And some of you who already ch made church planting, you may know a little bit. Whom of you, you worked in the beginning of the church, uh, of any kind of the church, you worked with Pastor David? Whom of you, you worked in the beginning? Maybe in, maybe in Lagos. Whom of you, you worked with him in Lagos in the beginning? Have you been in the beginning? Okay. So then you don't know. All right, maybe Pastor David, you will, then you will maybe make some comments how you do this, because I don't know. But what, if, what I would do if I go somewhere? For example, I come and I think, 
Okay, I want to have 1,000 people in one year. In one year. In one year. It means I need to create the system. I need to create the process. The process I need to create that will have one in the beginning and 1,000 at the end in one year. So I need now, I will need to create the system, this, the, cons, uh, this sequence, this sequence that will lead me there. Tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, I'm going to explain that, you know, for any system to be sustained, to exist, you need to create also structure for that. Because without the structure, the system will not work. But now I'm just showing you the system, okay? So the system, number one, I do step number one. In the beginning, who do I have in the beginning? In the beginning, I have me, I have the knowledge of God, and I can write, I don't have money, for example, even to print the, the flyers, but I can write the flyers. By the way, that's what Pastor Sunday did in the beginning of the church. He personally wrote, with a broken Russian, he wrote invitations. Can you imagine? 1994, with a broken Russian, he wrote invitations to the church personally. 100, you know, 100 samples each day. He did. 100. So he said, I woke up at 4, prayed for 2 or 3 hours. Then I sat for about a couple hours writing those invitations. No copy machines, no Xeroxes. Writing with the hands. Writing with his own hand. With a broken ration. With mistakes. For example, I have in the beginning. What I can do? How many people can I lead to Christ? How many people can I lead in one day? Let's say if I dedicate 3 or 4 hours for that. Every 15 minutes, I can lead one person. 15 minutes, is it enough to lead person to Christ? To share with that person the gospel of, you know, salvation. Is it enough 15 minutes? So it means four people an hour. Four hours means 16 people a day. So me, me, I can do 16 people a day. How many days are in the year? 365. Whom of you have a calculator? Can you multiply 16 times 365? Five thousand eight forty people. Of course, not all of them will come. Who knows the approximate number of people you led to Christ? How many of them they come to the church? About ten percent. So it means, by the end of the year, only doing, doing that, I can have about almost my church, almost. But what should I do? Tell me, what should I do to have this 600 by the end of the year? What should I do? 6,000. 6, yeah, but I, I take 10% that will, you know, leave. 90% will, you know, say thank you and bye-bye. Yeah, you need to reach 6,000. But what do I need to do every single day? I need to have four hours of evangelism and I need to have 16 people. It's a system. It's a system. I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to do it every single day. If you ask me, how did I learn? Uh, uh, where did I learn my English? Ask me. I learned it by myself. I did two hours of studying every day. In less than three months, I started to speak English. System. Ask me, what did I do? What did I do uh, on Saturdays? Did I, did I do, do my English? Of course. What did I do on Sundays? Did I do my English? Of course. Because it's a system. It's a system. Pastor John, you told us the story of your uh, 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 senior brother, you know, older brother, that, you know, he was the best graduate or he was the best student in Harvard. So what did he do on Sundays? It's a system. What did he do on Sundays? He studied. What did he do on Saturdays? He studied. Friday night? He studied. He studied all the time. Pastor Sunday, he was born in uh, August State, August State in, in, in Nigeria. He didn't have his, you know, he didn't know his father at all. He doesn't even know about him. He, he doesn't know who, what's his name. So he was born, you know, in a small village. And he became one, you know, he became be the best student in former Soviet Union, one of the universities as a journalist. Do you know how? Nine hours every day he spent at the library. 
nine hours every single day. What is that? It's a system. It's a system. So let me ask you a question. That's me only. I took myself only. Just me. Me only. No one else. No one else. Let me ask you a question. What if I'll build a structure that will have at least 10 people who will do the same? I will have about 6,000 people at the end of the year. But once again, I took very simple thing. I took 1,000 church members. For example, I have a you know, harder task because I'm working on raising leaders. To raise a leader, it takes about one year. Trust me, I know it already. I can tell you it. I can tell you, I can give you a detailed uh, you know, schedule how to raise a leader for one year. But it takes you to work one year to raise a leader. Of course, first you have to catch that leader. You know, you, ca you have to catch drug addict, you have to catch a prostitute, you have to catch, you know, those. And then to work for one year to raise the leader. But it's also a system. It's also a system. So ability to build system, that's what Islam, pe Islam people, that's what they do. They build systems. They build systems. They create the system. They have system. They operate according to the system. They don't do what they want on Saturdays, but they do what the system tells them to do on Saturdays. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what, what, time, what time do they pray normally? No, no, no. Friday, but every day, every day. Two o'clock. What do, what do Muslims do at two o'clock every day? What if they don't want? It's a system. It's a system. I know that right now you have 40 days uh, fast in your church. Whom of you, you are not fasting? For 40 days now. Some of you are not fasting, you know, because that's not a system for you. But you know that system. Whom of you, you want to have results of Pastor David? Is this 40-day fasting, is this your system, Pastor David? Join the system. Join the system. So if you join, if you, listen, the result is not, a, never comes by accident. It comes as a result of the system. So you should know how to build the systems. You should know, you should get the art of system building. Okay, let, let me show you, uh, Pastor David, uh, uh, sorry, Pastor John, Today, he showed you the, the system of personal uh, development, personal development. He didn't show you yet. Probably tomorrow, he will show you the step, you know, step by step, how that system can work. But I'm going just to give you the, this, this uh, for example, the system of your relationship with God. The system of your relationship with God. Listen, if you pray once a year for 12 hours, that will not help you to know or to help to, to, to build strong relationship with God. But if you pray every single day for at least one hour, in one year time, you will build strong relationship with God. Once, um, Smith Wigglesworth, he was asked, uh, how long does he pray? You know, do you know the story? He said, I never pray more than 15 minutes. But there are no 15 minutes, so I wouldn't pray. Each 15 minutes, he said, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Tell me, as a result of that, who, you know, those relationship with God, where did they lead him? To become, you know, the prophet, you know, the, the healing prophet of God. So if you build your relationship with God on a systematical foundation, where would they lead you? Another thing, uh, let's say, I know that uh, as a Dominion City Church, you have the system of church planting in Africa. Pastor David said a little bit about 120 churches, 120 churches, 120 churches. What is that? That's a system. That's a system. It's a system. Listen, you cannot, listen, you cannot cover whole Africa with churches just because you want it. But you have to create the system, the system that uh, lead you there, that lead you there. For example, Pastor David, may I ask you a question? If I would start the church... If I would start the Minion City Church for the first year, what is, what 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 goal do you have for the churches? Do you have a goal for churches for one year? Just about 144 people. Oh. All you need to do is take 12 people, work on them over a period of time, and let each of them multiply 12, 12 people. What is that? 
It's a system. Now let me ask you a question. Why is the Dominion City Church growing? Because of the system. Why are at the same moment, in the same Africa, in the same Nigeria, why are some other churches there not growing? Do they believe in the different God? Do they, do they, don't they know how to pray? They have no system. So the systems, they are very important. The understanding of systems. Once again, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to go into details, into details. Uh, how many of you have been here last year when I talked about systems? You've been, you've heard me, or during the year. How many of you have heard me about systems? May I see your hands, please? So majority of you have heard already, but you didn't even read the book. You didn't do the assignment, the homework. You didn't do the main part of what Pastor John has said. You did not do homework on systems. You know, I already know how to build systems, but every single month, yet I keep on reading, keep on reading, keep on reading, keep on reading about the ability. I need to develop my ability, my skill to build systems. Because if I don't build that ability, the rest, you know, the, the other, other people, they will build that, you know, they develop that ability. They develop the skill. So that is why, once again, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to details. Tomorrow I'll go straight to structure, because structure, that's something that sustains system to work. What Pastor David said, that's a system, you have to do that, but there is also a structure. The structure is, for example, there should be a pastor, there should be a territory, there should be a handbook. Do you have a handbook? Do you have a topics? Of course, they, they have it, you know, that's the structure. The structure that, is, that sustains or that is responsible for that system to exist, to operate. So tomorrow we'll talk more about structures. But I throw you a challenge. Listen, you need to become the expert, the expert, the expert on national level, the expert how to build systems. You need everything you do, every, anything that you do. You need to create the system. You need to create the system. You need to create the systems. There are many good books about it. You have to read them because, listen, no one can teach you if you, do, if you don't do your homework. I'm so sorry. For example, the way we do in this New Time for Africa project is very simple. I give you a lesson for one week, lesson for one week, and every single day, you know what I've noticed? I was shocked, actually. I was not shocked, I was surprised, I think. Because I, I know Nigerians as one of the, I've been told that they are very, how to say, they're very, possessive or they're very passionate they're very passionate if they really need something they're saying yes they're, they're going to do whatever it takes pastor david you know what we do so i send them one lesson a, a week one lesson a week and then they have to send me emails back with the homework with the lessons that they give you know every single day they have to work on themselves out of 40 people from the first group you'll be shocked every day there was only one person who sent me homeworks the rest, they would, say their, they would send their homeworks maybe once a month. When I asked them, I wrote them a letter, so why don't you do that? They said, oh, you know, we are, uh, we are busy. We are busy sometimes. You know, we are busy. We are busy. And I was shocked. If you really want to achieve something, you need to work on it every single day. If I wouldn't study English every single day, I would never speak it. I speak English, I know my English is not perfect, but hopefully, hopefully it's getting better. I'm working, you know, I speak English since 14, now I'm 38, 24 years I speak English, 24 years. But even until now, every single day, I spend 30 minutes a day, even while I'm here, I spend 30 minutes a day studying English, practicing, making my English better. Because it's a system. So, if you really want to become an expert in system building, welcome. It's, once again, it's for free. Just join. I just give you the information. I don't need anything from you. I just give information and you send. You work on yourself. What I do, I just discipline you with the system, with the system, with the system. The system disciplines you. That's all what you need. Once again, I do it because of your pastor. Learn how to build systems and then do the vision, you know, fulfill the vision that, you are in, that you're in. Fulfill the vision of Dominion City Church. Okay, I just want to equip you because I know that any conference, I, I've been here, you know, 
I want, you to, I want you to understand. I made a promise. I made a commitment for Pastor David. I will come for five years. After five years, I'm not going to come to Africa. It's not because I don't want. I may, I may become, but I'm not going to dedicate so much time for Africa. Why? Because it's useless. If for five years you will not study something, then what's the point for me to come? For two weeks now, I will be here. I quit my family, I leave my family, I leave my son, I leave the church, I come here. What for? Just to, to entertain or to say good things? Listen, you have to do the homeworks if you really want to achieve something. So that is why, once again, I gave you on systems, on systems I gave you. Tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, I'm going to explain the structures. That's another site, another perspective. I'll start with showing Pastor Sunday's message about the structures. Then I will go to structures. By the way, you know what? I don't do my system here. There is a system, my pastor system, and I just follow, you know, in that system. Every time I come, who noticed that every time I come, I bring Pastor Sunday's video, you know, message. Did you notice that? Because he knows that's a system. That's a system. That's a system also. It works. Listen, if there would be no system, if you see something successful in this world, there is a system behind it. There is a system behind it. Please don't think that I'm trying to hide from you, f from those of you who have not been here last year or during the year. I'm not trying to hide, but it's, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole conference. By the way, there will be CDs. On those CDs, you have those CDs from, you know, last year in Lagos, you know, here in Nugu. You have those CDs. You, did you see those? Did you see those CDs or videos? You see them? Just take them, read them, listen to them. Okay. So I, I showed you, I showed you, just one a small simple system, small system, a small simple example that system they're working. Once again, whenever you go, if you find this system, take your time, go deep into that system and find out. What is the sequence? What is the sequence? What is the step-by-step -step process? How they go there? How they get to their result? Listen, if there are any result, you have to learn. Uh, I taught, I, uh, probably you've heard about analytical thinking. You know what is analytical? Analytical thinking is it's when you go to, when you take everything on a small parts. So any success, any success, you should take on a small parts to understand what was the step-by-step -step process, step-by-step -step process, step-by-step -step process. For example, you have your pastor. I would, from you, I would not require, I would demand. I would write even the you know, collective, like gather together and write, write the letter, uh, letter to Pastor David with a request and demand. Pastor David, write the book about the history of your church. How did, how did the church start it? How did the church start it? How do I know, for example, these things? Once we gathered together and we asked Pastor Sunday, we had, this, you know, we had an apostolic council, we sat about for maybe two days, and we asked Pastor Sunday, tell us in details, how did you start the church? So we record everything he said, he prepared, he gave us, you know, step by step process. He explained us everything, how he has started, in details. So we got the sequence, and now for those who really wants to work, they simply take and copy. They simply take and copy the sequence. The sequence. In other words, we know the system. We know because building the church once again is a system. Pastor David, when you moved, when you left uh, church here and you moved to Accra, how did you start that church? How did you start that church? The first thing I do is to get twelve people. So I work on developing twelve people. For how many? For how much time? Uh, it takes me a whole year, but. The first three months, I sit with only those 12 guys. At the end of it, I instruct them to start multiplying themselves. So while I'm still working on them. So the first time, 30 days, is their turn to multiply. And we grow a church of 120. So do you want to have a successful church? Here's the system. Very simple. Very simple system. Of course, there are some other details because I ask only about how to work with people. But there is a system of 
family relationship at the same moment. There is a system of your personal relationship with God. There is a system of your fasting. There is a system of self-education at the same time. There is a system. That's, you know, that's a whole bunch of things. But if you will get and you learn how to do this, let me ask you a question. Pastor David, if you will go to New Zealand, for example, to launch the church, what will you do the first? I will take 30 days especially to pray. When I come out, then I will use relational skills to catch 12 people. Just 12 people, only 12. Will he succeed? What do you think? Because the volume of his personality understanding of how the system operates and this and that's the system of Jesus Christ where did you get the system from Jesus so and any process like that any process like that studying in university building family relationship raising your kids anything any any area of your life where you want to get a success you have to build this system. Once again, the system is the, cons the sequence, the step-by-step -step process that leads you unconditionally, leads you to, this, to your result. But, once again, tomorrow I will show you, you need, I will explain you, you need to have a structure. You need to support that system. Because without the structure, the system will not work. It will just a good idea, right idea, perfect idea, perfect strategy that is not working. That's what most of us would do also. You know, we have good plans, but we never fulfill them. Because we don't demand to build the structure behind that. So, I think for now, I told, I, I told you everything that I, I need to tell you for now. So, for tomorrow, for tomorrow, please, get ready. I know Pastor John will tell, you know, details. So, I want you to write down, and you see, look what you're... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm surprised with you. I'm sorry. With some of you, I'm surprised. Look what your pastor is doing. Look at what is he doing. What is he doing now? Whom of you, you are not writing? You are not making notes? Whom of you, you are not making notes during the teaching? Sorry, I didn't see you making notes. So, yeah? So you need to make notes. You know, just repeat the system. So tomorrow, make notes. And then we will follow you, you know, we'll follow with you to the next level, all right? Thank you so much.